we have another story. And this one is by G.E.M. Skews. And it's called Well I'm. So a bit of information about Mr. Skews or Mrs. Skews. Oh no, he, Mr. Skews. He was a family lawyer in London who also applied his acute legal mind to the matter of fishing. Indeed, he invented a new style of fly fishing called nymph fishing. The author of several esoteric books on his favourite hobby, such as Minor Tactics of the Chalk Stream, he could also communicate the sport's amusing side. Well, yeah, let's go. It's called Well I'm. Mr. Theodore Castwell, having devoted a long, strenuous and not unenjoyable life to hunting to their doom innumerable salmon trout and grayling in many quarters of the globe, and having gained much credit among his fellows for his many ingenious improvements in rods, flies and tackle employed for that end, in the fullness of time died and was taken to his own place. St. Peter looked up from a draft balance sheet at the entry of the attendant angel. A gentleman giving the name of Castwell says he is a fisherman, your holiness, and has Fly Fishers Club London on his card. Hmm, says St. Peter. Fetch me the ledger with his account. St. Peter perused it. Hmm, said St. Peter. Show him in. Mr. Castwell entered cheerfully and offered a cordial right hand to St. Peter. As a brother of the angle, he began. Hmm, <laughs> said St. Peter. I'm sure I shall not appeal to you in vain for special consideration in connection with the quarters to be assigned to me here. Hmm, said St. Peter. I have been looking at your account from below. Nothing wrong with it, I hope, said Mr. Castwell. Hmm said St. Peter. I've seen worse. What sort of quarters would you like? Well, said Mr. Castwell, do you think you could manage something in the way of a country cottage of the of the Test Valley type, with modern conveniences and say three quarters of a mile of one of those pleasant chalk streams, clear as crystal, which proceed from out the throne, attached? Why, yes, said St. Peter. I think we can manage that for you. Then what about your gear? You must have left your fly rods and tackle down below. I see you prefer a light split cane of nine foot or so, with appropriate fittings. I will indent upon the works department for what you require, including a supply of flies. I think you will approve of our dresser's productions. Then you will want a keeper to attend you. Thanks awfully, your holiness, said Mr. Carswell. That will be first rate. To tell you the truth, from the revelations I read, I was inclined to fear that I might be just a teeny-weeny bit bored in heaven. In, hmm, said St. Peter, checking himself. <laughs> it was not long before Mr. Carswell found himself alongside an enchantingly beautiful clear chalk stream, some fifteen yards wide, swarming with fine trout, feeding greedily, and presently the attendant angel assigned to him had hand in him the daintiest, most exquisite, light split cane rod conceivable, perfectly balanced with reel and line, with a beautiful damp tapered cast of incredible fineness and strength, and a box of flies of such marvellous tying as to be almost mistakable for the natural insects they were to stimulate. Mr. Carswell scooped up a natural fly from the water, matched it perfectly from the fly box, and knelt down to cast to a riser, putting up just under a tussock ten yards or so above him. The fly lit like a gossamer six inches above the last ring, floated a moment and went under in the next ring, and next moment the rod was making the curve of beauty. Presently, after an exciting battle, the keeper netted out a beauty of about two and a half pounds. Heavens! cried Mr. Castwell. This is something like. I am sure His Holiness will be pleased to hear it, said the keeper. Mr. Carswell prepared to move upstream to the next riser when he became aware that another trout had just taken up the position of that which he had just landed and was rising. Just look at that, he said, dropping instantaneously to his knee and drawing off some line. A moment later an accurate fly fell just above the neb of the fish and instantly Mr. Carswell engaged in battle with another lusty fish. All went well, and presently the landing net received its two and a half pounds. 
A very pretty brace, said Mr. Carswell, preparing to move on to the next of the string of busy nebs which he had observed putting up round the bend. As he approached the tussock, however, he became aware that the place from which he had just extracted so satisfactory a brace was already occupied by another busy feeder. "'Well, I'm damned!' cried Mr. Carswell. "'Do you see that?' "'Yes, sir,' said the keeper. "'The chance of extracting three successive trout from the same spot was too attractive to be foregone, and once more Mr. Carswell knelt down and delivered a perfect cast to the spot. Instantly it was accepted, and battle was joined. All held, and presently a third gleaming trout joined his brethren in the creel. "'Heavens!' exclaimed Mr. Carswell. "'Was there ever anything like it?' "'No, sir,' said the keeper. "'Look here,' said he to the keeper. "'I think I really must give this chap a miss and pass on to the next.' "'Sorry, it can't be done, sir. His holiness would not like it.' "'Well, if that's really so,' said Mr. Carswell, and knelt reluctantly to his task. Several hours later he was still clasping to the same tussock. <laughs> "'How long is this confounded rise going to last?' inquired Mr. Carswell. "'I suppose it will stop soon.' "'No, sir,' said the keeper. "'What, isn't there a slack hour in the afternoon?' No afternoon, sir. What? Then what about the evening rise? No evening, sir, said the keeper. Well, I shall knock off now. I must have had about thirty brace from that corner. Beg pardon, sir, but his holiness would not like that. What? said Mr. Carswell. Mayn't I even stop at night? No night here, sir, said the keeper. Then do you mean that I have to go on catching these damned two and a half pounders at this corner for ever and ever? The keeper nodded. Hell, said Mr. Carswell. Yes, said his keeper. The end. <laughs> that was like a, a long joke, really, more of a joke, wasn't it? Um, uh, but yeah, very interesting. So thanks, Sammy, for your encouragement and... Uh, yeah, a little random bonus story there. So I hope you enjoyed that. I thought that was fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's a short story, but more of a joke, you know. Oh, a fisherman goes to heaven and uh, he has to perpetually catch the same trout in the same stream. Very good, very good. So, um, yeah, just a very short one. Uh, but, yeah, I am very much enjoyed it. So, guys... Thanks everyone who joined me this evening. I think I'll be back tomorrow with another great British short story. And then on Thursday I'm going to make a change, I think, and read one from the Aldous Huxley collection. Uh, and then, like I said, on Sunday, I can show you again here. On Sunday I'll be reading about uh, the origins, meaning and tradition of Halloween. So lots coming up. So, yeah, be sure to subscribe if you're not and share the channel around to get some more eyes and ears involved and people to come in and join us for these um, lives and grow the community and followers but for now enjoy the rest of your evening and your week and i hope to see you again but for now take care and i'll see you soon bye guys